appreciate everyone coming, uh, being here with us tonight. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Especially the bad weather and all. Hope you'll come back. Second Peter chapter 1. And I was talking about it coming to the acknowledgement of the truth. And for, for some folks, the acknowledgement of the truth is they've never been saved. That's where it starts. You're going to have to be honest about that thing. You gotta, if you're going to, you're going to be able to recover yourself out of any snare that Satan has set for you, any trap he set for you, if you've never been saved, you can't be deceptive about that and worry about what people think and all the pressures people put on you. Now, let me give you real quick my testimony. When I first moved here uh, from Houston, Texas, uh, we weren't raised in church. My uncle owned a bar. My mom and dad worked there on their after-hours jobs. And I was raised around the live music and party scene when I was just a boy. The school bus let me off right there in front of the Breezeway. And that was the name of the second biggest dance floor in Pasadena, Texas. The biggest was, was Gillies. They were the competition. They were our competition. Because our family was invested in the breeze money. And uh, I, I didn't know God. I, the only time I'd ever heard the name of Jesus Christ, it was in vain. I didn't know the gospel. I wouldn't have known what you were talking about. When we moved to Tennessee, it was because me and my brother were in trouble. And uh, they were about to put us in a juvenile facility. And my mom said, I'm going to get them out of here and get them in the small town that I was raised in. And that was her idea, and so that's how I ended up here. And uh, first time someone asked me, what's my favorite book in the Bible? I didn't know what they were talking about. Well, the Bible is a book. I didn't, what are you talking about, a book of the Bible? So I said, what's yours? And they said, well, mine's a book of Revelation. I said, yeah, that, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. I just felt that pressure. I felt all eyes on me. And, uh, and you know, I had a friend named Nick, and he was talking to me about being saved, and and I mean, the first prayer I ever prayed was, Lord, shut this guy up, you know. <laughs> and he didn't answer. I mean, he kept right on me and kept preaching to me. And I remember we walked in from, uh, from being outside and messing around. And we sat down in the living room and we were both tired. And he had a Mountain Dew, I had a Mountain Dew. And his mom walked in. And he said, Mom, he said, oh, Gilbert here had never been saved. And my heart dropped down on my belt. And I looked at her, and she jumped up. She said, well, hold on a second. She went in there, got a Bible, and I mean, I'm just a big. <laughs> so it seemed in my memory anyway. She brought it out, opened it up, said, let me show you something. <laughs> I'm sitting there trembling. And she starts preaching at me and talking to me about the Lord. And I mean, I'm nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I just know she's going to ask me a question. I don't know the answer. And I'm sitting there listening at her. And you know what? The Word was getting through. That seed was being sown. Living seed coming in there. As Brother Job was talking about, the entrance of thy words giveth light. I was receiving light as I listened to her and paid attention. I didn't get saved that day. Uh, I, I kind of laughed it off. And somebody else talked to me about the Lord. And I kind of laughed it off. One day we were sitting in Tennessee history class. And uh, the teacher there, she says this. She says, uh, this area was settled by... Uh, by folks that were Christian, and she goes, how many Christians do we have in here today? And I'm sitting there looking around. I'm from Houston. I've never seen a question or heard a question like that in my life. And she says, how many Christians do we have in here today? Raise your hand. I'm thinking, who is the nerd that's going to raise his hand? And I turned around, and every kid in the class has their hand raised. And they're all staring at me. I'm the nerd who doesn't have his hand raised. And my teacher says, uh, she says, I wish it were that every kid in here could raise their hand. <laughs> and I raised my hand. <laughs> I told a big lie. I said I was saved. I wasn't saved. I just wanted to fit in. See, that's the thing in the Bible Belt. Peer, peer pressure down here is a lot different. And people will say they're saved when they're not saved. And there I was lying. I said, yeah, I'm saved. And I looked over there and there was my friend Nick going, <laughs> I felt Holy Ghost conviction. <laughs> I was sweating, and and you know what happened? That day was a real, was a realization for me. Now you could have talked to me about hell, and, and that dear lady did. She talked to me about hell and my need to be born again. And I thank God for what she said. But hell was off. I mean, death was off. Judgment was off. I was a young boy. I wasn't worried. About
heard about those things right now, but what happened to me that day was a realization that I was separated from God right now. I didn't know God. He didn't know me. You know what that led to? That led to me there sitting there, and even though I laughed every witness and preacher off and just acted like I was okay, by the night time I'd lay there on my bed and I'd just heave under that burden of sin. And I'd think, I don't even know how to start to get right with God. I don't know how to be right with God. I don't even know how to be a Christian. I don't know what it means to be saved. And I'd lay there and I'd just cry myself to sleep. And one day, boy, there's all ganging up there in the house and live music in the house. They're coming in there with, the, with their coolers filled and fixing to have a big party. And I just shook my head. So I'm, I'm not going to be here for this. And I walked there to the edge of the, of the hallway, and there was a big family Bible that my grandmother had left to my dad. And I just, for some reason, grabbed that Bible. And I put it on my arm, and I went down over the hill. And I opened up that book that I'd been hearing people witness to me about, preach to me about, and there was a big, giant, laminated Bible marker in there. And I sit there. That's where I figured out what a book of the Bible was, what a chapter was, what a verse was. I just turned it to what that Bible marker said. I mean, I was lost. I didn't have a clue what anyone was talking about. And I'm looking up those references. And I sit there and I looked at those words of Jesus Christ. And it said, and I, I was thinking about being separated from God and having that burden of sin what I needed was reconciliation. I wouldn't have known what that word was. I wouldn't have known what that meant to be reconciled with God. If you'd have asked me, do you need to be reconciled? I, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But that was the burden of my heart. I couldn't have put it into words. I hadn't been raised in church. I didn't know the religious lingo. But that was the problem right there. I was separated from God. And I read there, Christ saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man... Hear my voice and will open the door. I'll come into him and sup with him and he will leave. And that day right there, just a young teenage boy, I bowed my head and from my heart, I trusted only Jesus Christ, God's Son, to be my Savior. You say, well, was that salvation? Yep. That's it. You wasn't even in church? I wasn't even in church. It was me and God and the Bible, and the belief in the gospel that Jesus died for my sins and rose again. And I called on his name that day. And it all started over. Since then, I've seen both my mom and dad. I baptized my dad right back here several years ago. They come to church and my dad does. My mom's in heaven right now. My brothers are here. My sister's here. Nephews and nieces have all followed the Lord and believers' baptism. Come to know Jesus Christ. Listen, Something happened that day. Amen. Something real. Yeah. Either I went crazy <laughs> or I got a hold of something good. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, Amen. listen, this thing called salvation is absolutely real. Amen. Like I told you earlier, I got no reason to lie to you. Honestly, I got no reason to trick anybody here, manipulate you. There's nothing in this for me physically or anybody else that's here. The fact is, we know that the salvation of the Lord is absolutely real. Amen. And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom.